I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit has interpreted the message of that song to you. It's actually a very, very uh, good message. I think if we try to interpret that in English, it's probably not going to be as... Uh, but the message in there is, yes, the Lord is great and He is great in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, uh, yes, good and blessed afternoon. Yung, um, uh, those people who just uh, came up or came during the praise and worship, welcome. We are uh, very blessed to uh, worship the Lord with you this afternoon. And to the people who just recently joined us online, welcome, welcome. Um, once again, yes, I uh, indeed agree with all the prayers made in this place this afternoon. Can we all just um, give a clap offering to the Lord for the life of these children? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, um, yes, children as they are, they're gonna grow, they're gonna spread their wings, they're gonna be unplucked and be planted, but we know and we do believe that uh, as long as Sister Grace said, you continue to keep the Word of God close to you. Yeah, the Lord God, the Word will serve as a lamp to enlighten your footings and a light to direct you. Amen? And uh, yes, are we enjoying the presence in the company of the Lord so far this morning? Amen, church? Hallelujah. Um, can I invite each and everyone to stand up and let us welcome the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is found in Exodus chapter 17. And in verse 14 and 15, I uh, took the NLT because uh, New Living Translation. Because when I was reading it, um, uh, yeah, the NLT kind of struck a deeper meaning. So I was reading it. And it says in here, I mean, you can see that, HESB, but I will read it in LLT, NLT. It says in here, after the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under the heaven. And Moses built an altar, altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you are our banner. And under your name, thank you that you have gathered us here this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for how you have shown and your grace us with your presence and your company this morning. Father, our desire, your servant's desire, O Lord, is that through your words, may we continuously encounter you. May we continuously learn and experience you. Father, my prayer is you open each and every heart, you open each and every mind, you open each and every spiritual senses so that, Lord, your words can come and lodge in as you please, O God. Lord, let it be done unto us according to your words. If these words is here to rebuke us, then let it be done. If these words are here to teach us, then let your, be done, your will be done, Lord. If it is here to train us, then it shall be done, O God, in order for us, your people, your children, redeemed by your blood, O God, May we be perfected 
up until the day of the time of your Son Jesus Christ coming, where every one of us can stand face to face, queuing for that embrace, saying, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's happiness. So Lord Holy Spirit, we invite you to be our teacher. We invite you to illuminate us through your words this afternoon. And we take authority over all the works of the enemy, especially the works of the enemy over our flesh. We rebuke them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all sit down. God bless us all. I appreciate that it is not our first time that we heard about Jehovah, our banner. Amen. The reason that I uh, choose the um, uh, um, I choose the NLT is uh, because in most of the translation they say Jehovah, isn't it? And especially for this period, seems that the word Yahweh or the YHWH have that heavy burden, have that heavy impression. Amen. So whichever it is, if you are um, uh, more uh, uh, comfortable and using Jehovah. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, the message of uh, the title of our message today, according to the word, is Yahweh, our Nisi. Amen. Or according to the scripture, it's inter interpreted to us as the Lord is my banner. Amen. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my victory. Amen, church. Amen. So, what actually happens here? Yeah, I want us to understand and study what happens here, my dear brothers and sisters, no? This happens after the Israelites won their battle against the Amalekites. Yeah, we're gonna look at that in a little moment. This happens, this story happens when the people of Israel won their battle against the Amalekites. And what did Moses do? It says in here that Moses built an altar. And like what we have said earlier, what is an altar? An altar is a sacred, elevated structure, elevated place, where it is a place of offering, a place of worship, a place of prayer. And we can see in the Bible, in the New Old Testament, there are a lot of people where people built an altar. Amen. Because especially, you know, beginning from Abraham, as they are moving through the promised land, the Lord instructed them a place where He will meet with them. So they built an altar there. Amen. And as they go further, as they go travel further, they worship, they offer prayer, they offer uh, an offering to the Lord. They are not going to go back to the first altar that they have built. How can you reach the land of the promise if you keep on going back? If you keep on going back, you move. So they build another altar. Amen. Up until the time, my dear brothers and sisters, where the Lord called Moses in the Sinai, and the Lord spoke to Moses, and the Lord instructed them to build an ark. Amen. So that altar was replaced by the ark. It was replaced by a tent of meeting. Amen. And eventually, we have said last time, that when the people of Israel was settled, David said, God, I will build you a temple in place of the uh, tent that is being pitched from places to places. But God said, I appreciate it, but I would like your son Solomon to build it. Amen. So going back, my dear brothers and sisters, 
when the Israelites won their battle against the Amalekites, Moses built an altar and Rephidim. Amen? And like what we have said, an altar is not an altar without a sacrifice. So I'm sure that Moses offered a sacrifice in there as well. But what really struck me here, my dear brothers and sisters, is not only did Moses build an altar, because we will see many altars were built in the past, there will be altars built after this. And like what we've said, altar is not an altar without a sacrifice. But what really blessed me here, my dear brothers and sisters, is that not only Moses built an altar for a place of offering to the Lord, but the actual inscription that Moses put in the altar. And what is that? Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my victory. Amen, church. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my victory. Because Moses recognized that it is only through the presence of God, it is only through the power of Yahweh under which the Israelites was able to win the battle. My dear brothers and sisters, it was only through the provision, it was only through the work, it was only through the miracle of the Lord that the Israelites triumphed against their enemies. That is the reason why that Moses labeled it, the Moses inscribed it with Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Amen, church. Amen. Anyone of us in here wanting or desiring to have a victorious life? Amen. Do you guys desire, do you guys pray for a victorious life? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen, church. And I put a caveat in there in small writing. Read the small writing. Because most people, if the church preach about victory, victorious blessing, they point you, oh, prosperity church. I will put a caveat in there. We are not, and we categorically declare we are not a prosperity church. Amen. Amen. Anyone in here want to lead a victorious life? Amen. Amen. You are part of this congregation. Anyone in here wants this church that they are part of be a victorious church? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Only some wants it. Okay. Only some wants it. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. By the way, as you read your Bible, I know that you already know that this is the only time, this is the only point in the Bible where God was referenced as Yahweh Nisi. This is the only time where God was introduced to the people of old. So now we inherited that God is our banner. That God is our victory. Yahweh, our Nisi. Amen. I want us to be familiarized with the story. Let's read it beginning from verse 8. Are you ready to learn, church? Amen. Let us learn. Let us apply learning. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. So, oh, people who loved Strebia, if you ask, oh, where was the Lord Yahweh Nisi was declared? It is in Rephidim. Amen. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites 
at Refidim. Where is Refidim, my dear brothers and sisters? I don't know where is Refidim now or what is the new name for Refidim now. But if you look at the geography of Israel, Refidim would be in the south. Refidim would be in the border between Egypt and between Israel. Because as you would see, the people of Israel are just coming out of the Red Sea. They were coming out of the Red Sea when these people, the Amalekites, attacked them. Amen? So it should be in the south. I don't know where it is now. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites tomorrow. I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. I'm sure we have already read this passage before. It's just a refresher. Amen? So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses and Aaron and her went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands or the staff of God, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, napagod, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steadily till set. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. And here it is where the passage came, that the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of the Amalek from under the heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it Yahweh Nisi, or the Lord, is my banner. Amen, church. My dear brothers and sisters, like what I have said, this is the first battle that the Israelites fought. Amen. As they were progressing through the promised land, they fight with many tribes. They fight with many kingdoms. They fight with many communities. And this is the very first battle that they fought. Because remember, just 11 days ago, they were rushing out of Egypt. Amen. They were rushing out of Egypt. And they were walking towards the promised land. And that was a few days ago. And they thought that they were already spared from the army of the Egyptian. Little that they know that once they cross over a different territory, there are these people, the Amalek, amen, who wants to attack them, who wants to destroy them, who wants to defeat them, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. The moment that they step their first journey towards Canaan, the promised land, this tribe called the Amalek attacked them, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us not forget that the people of Israel lived in Egypt for 400 years under slavery. They were not fighting men. They were not trained in a battle. That's the reason why Moses committed a crime. Because there is this one Egyptian who is beating to death this Israelite. And this Israelite does not even know how to defend himself. This Israelite thought that his name is Punching Bag. 
So he did not even fought. That's a time when Moses saw it and something was steered inside Moses that he defended this Jewish man. So my dear brothers and sisters, the people of Israel coming out of Egypt, they were not fighting men. They were not trained in a battle. They were slaves 400 years. What was taught to their children when they were growing up is, you are a slave and you will die a slave. And what about these Amalekites? These Amalekites are warlike tribe. They come with horses. They come with weapon. They come with their own band of army attacking Israelites. So my dear brothers and sisters, no brainer. There is no battle in there. There is no fight in there. There is no contest in there. Do you agree? Amen. You know what the, on, the, the Israelite only had? What the only the Israelite had is, hang on. When we were leaving Egypt, when we were at the edge of the Red Sea, there was a promise of God. Be still. Do not fear. You do not even have to fight this battle, for this fight is mine, and I shall prevail. Amen, church. Yes, the Israelites were no fighting men. The Israelites were no trained in a battle. But they have a promise. Amen, church. They have a promise. And you know what? Depending on what translation you're going to use, your Bible is filled with at least more than 7,000 promises. And each and every single one of those promises are available to anyone who wants to believe. Amen. Amen. Let's not reduce that promise. If the Lord said, the Holy Spirit power will come to you, that's the promise. If you choose to not to accept that promise, then with all due respect, okay. But for me, I want to avail on that promise. Amen, church. They were no match. There was no fight. But they hold on to the promise of the Lord when they were standing on the edge of the Red Sea. Israelites are behind them. The Red Sea is in front of them. It's either utter slaughter at the back or drowning to death in the front. But what did the Lord promise them? Don't be afraid. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord and see the hand of the Lord. Amen. You do not even have to fight this battle. Because the Lord will fight it for you and He will prevail. Now it makes sense that it was called the Lord is our banner. Because it was an utter slaughter. But the Lord provided them victory. Amen, church. Again, the question, you want to lead a victorious life? You want to lead a victorious life? The same promise given to these people is available to you. Amen, church. Have no fear. Be still. The Lord will fight the battle for you. And the Lord will prevail. Amen, church. So what happened? Moses appoints Joshua. Joshua chose for a few of our men. Amen. So that's why they were living in the promise. There's probably hundreds of thousands coming out of the uh, Red Sea. And Moses said that, yeah, let's go. All of us and win the battle. But no. Because they were holding on to that promise. You see? When Moses appointed Joshua, he said, 
choose some of our men to go and fight for them. Amen, church. Amen. So as long as you stand in the Lord, the number does not count. So as long as you stand in the Lord, the number does not count. So as long as you stand in the promises of the Lord, pounds, dollars does not count. Amen, church. So as long as you stand in the promise of the Lord, wealth, might, education does not count. Amen, church. Amen. So Joshua, as per order, choose some men and he went and fight with the Amalekites while Moses said, I will go on top of the hill and stand and intercede for you. I may not be brandishing a sword. I may not be sticking my, I don't know, my stake. But I will be on top of the hill, being a part of your battle, interceding for you. Interceding with you. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are not standing in the front, Leading the praise and worship. You are sitting there. You know your ministry is equally important. Amen. Because even as the praise and worship is going on, if there are people in there praying and interceding, that is the backbone. That is the backbone. Amen, church. How many of you in here? Be honest. How many of you in here? That even, so even as we share this message, how many of you in here are actually seated there and in interceding for the message? I'm gonna share to you, and Mayan can attest on this. I was raised on that practice when I was not yet a pastor of a church, when I was yet starting in the ministry. Every time that my pastor stand in the pulpit to preach, I am there attentively listening, writing, but in the spirit, I am interceding that Lord empower the word that you have given through my pastor. Empower the word that you have given through my pastor. Amen. Amen. If you are really committed, I encourage, I solicit this world that we are living in. You know, the work of the enemy is not outside. The work of the enemy is inside. As we speak, the word of the enemy is whispering in your ears, do not listen. Do not pay attention. Does that, that does not apply to you. It's not good. So my dear brothers and sisters, I cry. I cry. I ask. This is not a pastor's work. This is the body of Christ's work. Be a part. Have a burden. Be a partaker. Amen. Moses said, Joshua, choose some men and go and fight the battle as I go on top of the hill to intercede with you, to pray with you. Amen, church? That's what happened in the story. If you were paying attention, I was not trying to invent things here. Amen, church? So Moses went on top of the hill and he brought with him Aaron and her. Amen, church? And according to the word, as long as Moses held up his hand or the rod or the staff in his hand, my dear brothers and sisters, because in Leo, in power, in due of intercession, the Israelites were winning. But the Bible also tells us that when Moses grow tired his hands lowers 
and the Amalekites are winning. So what did Aaron and her did? They brought a stone. They put them on top of the other in order for Moses to sit down on. And still it did not remedy, it did not solve the problem because Moses is still growing tired. So what did Aaron and her do? They stood on their either side and they support the hand of Moses. Amen, church. And it sustained the whole day up until Joshua ultimately won the battle. Until Joshua ultimately and his companion defeated the Amalekites. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Again, you want to be victorious in your life? Amen. Amen. You want to be a victorious professional? You want to be victorious in your career? This is applied as well. You want to be to prepare young people who are aspiring? You want to become a victorious partner in life, husband, wife in life? If you want to become a victorious parent to your children in the future, and if you want to become a victorious servant of God, if you want this church that you are part of become a victorious church, my dear brothers and sisters, let us learn from the Word of God. Amen. Let us learn from the principles by which God has established His works. Amen. Amen. What did the Lord said to Moses? After Joshua win the battle, after Joshua won the battle, the Lord said to Moses, pay attention, the Lord said to Moses, Moses, write this down in a scroll. Amen. Moses, make sure that you document what happened in this battle here today. Moses, make sure that what happened in this place today is gonna become a testament. Amen, church. As a permanent reminder. When it says permanent reminder, does it only remind that generation? It reminds all the generation coming after them. When Jesus Christ instituted the communion, Jesus Christ says, do this whenever you drink it. Do this whenever you partake of it. You proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. That is another lasting testament that is not only stop during those people in there. Amen, church. Yeah? So this is what the instruction of the Lord to Moses. Record this for the future generation. Amen. That was the past generation. Is this the future generation? Church, hello? Amen. That is Joshua. You are now the Joshua generation, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, as a Christian, there is a call. As a Christian, bilang isang Kristiano, there is a calling for us to be the Joshua generation. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Amen. Have you heard about this Joshua generation? What is Joshua generation? Joshua is the one who conquered the most formidable army on earth. Jo um, remember Jericho? The Joshua generation as a Christian, we ought to live that spirit. 
anointed, conqueror. Amen, church. If you are a Christian, desire to have that spirit of Joshua as someone who is anointed, someone who conquers. Amen, church. I would like to have that Joshua spirit. I would love to have that Joshua spirit. Amen, church. Amen. Let's digest this, no? We claim to have left Egypt. Amen. That's why we are here. That's why we are seated in here. Because we claim to have left Egypt. Egypt symbolizes the world. Thank you, Pat. Egypt symbolizes the world. Egypt symbolizes our old life. Egypt symbolizes our old customs and practices and traditions. Amen, church. And we claim to have left Egypt. When that blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, was applied in the doorposts and in the lentils of our heart and life, we received that Passover, Passover from death to life. When that blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, was shed out in the cross, and we applied that in our life, we receive salvation. Amen. Not only that we turn back from Egypt, we receive the salvation of God. Not only that we turn back from that sinful nature, that world, but my dear brothers and sisters, we became children of God. We became saved. Amen, church. And now we all went through Red Sea. Red Sea is our baptism. Amen. Anyone in here yet to be baptized? I pray to God, desire it and schedule. Amen. We all had gone through Red Sea. That is our baptism. Amen, church. And we are heading through Canaan, the promised land. We're at the end of this, our Savior and Master and Lord, Jesus Christ, is standing at that gate, in that door, with arms wide open, welcoming everyone who will arrive, who will complete, who will find that narrow door to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, come and share your master's happiness. You know, that was written in Matthew 25. But before that was written, if you go back to Matthew 24, it talks about all the perils. It talk, uh, talks about all the trials and tribulations that will come. The trials and tribulation symbolizes Amalek, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. You were called out of Egypt. You received salvation. You received baptism. You are heading to the promised land. But before you get there, along the way, there are many types of Amalek that will attack you. There were many types of Amalek that will try to hinder you from receiving the promise that will try to stop you from actually stepping into your promised land. And Amalek is a type of trials and tribulations and perils. Amen. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Before we get there, we will have to battle through many Amalekites. We will have to battle through many struggles, many experiences here on earth, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. But praise the Lord because Hebrews 13, 8, it says in here that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen, church. Jesus Christ was Yahweh Nisi during their fight against the Amalek. 
He is our Yahweh Nisi during our fight today and He will be the Yahweh Nisi tomorrow. Amen, church. The Lord said that in this world, there will be many, Matthew chapter 24, trials, perils, tribulations. But I am telling you ahead of time, so that in me, you may have peace. John 16, 33. That's what Jesus said. Because in this world, you will pass through tribulations and trials. You will be faced with many type of Amalekites. But Jesus said, I have overcome all those. Amen. I am your Yahweh Nisi. I am your banner. I don't know what struggles each and every one has here. Or I don't know what struggles each and every one represents. Usually our struggle revolve in a cycle. If it is not us personally, especially with the Filipinos, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our relatives, our family member, they may be here in, with us or they may be abroad. And all the other things, our friends, our neighbors, colleagues, we have the tendency to bear all those burdens. But my dear brothers and sisters, whatever burden that you carry, why don't you try to bring it under that banner? Surrender it under that banner. Surrender it with Yahweh Nisi. Remember, when the Israelites were fighting the Amalekites, it was impossible fight. It was only miracle of God that they won. So whatever miracle that you are needing right now, by faith, the Lord said, if you only have a faith as small as the mustard seed and you do not have doubt, it will be possible for you. Amen. It is not saying that it is within your capacity. It is saying that we have a big, big God that we cannot limit. We have a big, big God that we cannot put in a box. Amen, church. I don't know what impossible life situation that you face right now. To be honest, I cannot help you. <laughs> but I know someone who can. Amen. Amen. I know someone who can. I may point you at the way, but I cannot walk those steps for you. I may teach you the know-how according to what I have read, But I cannot make you understand. Amen, church. Before we get there, there will be battles. And what did Jesus, the Lord said, record this for future Joshua generation. Record this for the future. For our sake, my dear brothers and sisters. For our sake who sometimes are losing hope. Sometimes are losing faith. Sometimes are getting tired. Sometimes are getting confused. That's why the Lord said, write this as a testament for the future Joshua generation. Amen, church. And what did he say? Repeat it, recite it, recite it, repeat it, share it. It says even in there, in the ears of Joshua. They say, ears, attention, attentiveness, understanding. I want us to understand that there is no other way, form, or shape of victory if not through our Yahweh Nisi. Amen, church. Moses symbolizes what? 
Moses symbolizes what? Anyone? Moses symbolizes leadership. Moses symbolizes leadership. Do you agree or no? Amen. Because, I mean, the Lord can only say that, Amen, people of Israel, wake up, break through out of the land. But the Lord sent Moses. Moses symbolizes leadership. And when they were walking in the wilderness, when they exit Egypt and they walk towards the wilderness, there is a lot of grievances from the people that everything, Moses, my chicken is missing. Moses, that's my clothes. I wash it and he, he took it away. And every simple things, they come to Moses. And what did Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, the priest of Midian, what did he say? You know, Moses, you cannot really do everything, the simple ones. Delegate. Huh? Delegate. That's why Moses chose leaders to delegate the task. What is the stop of God symbolizes? Authority. Authority. When Moses, when God called Moses in Exodus chapter 3, chapter 4, Moses said, God, how would I tell the people, how can I explain to the people that you authorize me to pluck them out of Egypt? What did God said? What is that in your hand? It's a stop, it's a rod. You know, it's common for those people before to have a rod, to have a staff, because you walk in a barren land. You need a rod, you need a staff. But there is something in Moses' rod, because that Moses' rod symbolizes that the Lord authorized him. That's what Moses said. If they will ask, what will I do? What is that in your hand? A rod, a staff. Throw it, it will become snake. That will be a symbol that I have sent and authorized you. In the dispute between the 12 tribes of Israel, who is to lead them spiritually, and what did the Lord said? Tell every family, every head of the family, to bring their seal of authority, to bring their staff, and tell Aaron to bring his. And to whoever staff that will bide him, I authorize. So Moses is a type of authority, uh, a leader, leadership. The rod symbolizes a type of authority. Aaron in her symbolizes leadership, leaders. Amen. Joshua symbolize the army to advance the war. Amen. Am I making sense? Or am I uh, trying to invent things in here? I hope not. No? And by all means, God is the prime. God is the sole authority. God is the prime authority. God is the supreme authority. No question asked on that. He is sovereign, He is almighty, He is all-powerful. No question as in that. But if you read your Bible in Romans chapter 13, God has put in place in this earth authority. Shall we read that quickly? Romans chapter 13. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authority that existed have been established by God. Consequently, who he rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right 
But those who do wrong, do you want to be freed from the fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid for he does not fear, bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. You know, personally, I believe that in this world, in this earth, the Lord said, there is no authority that the Lord in place, even the evil authority. Even as we speak Putin and all those evil, it was God's instrument. It is God who placed them in there. Amen. And I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that in this world, the Lord has instigated three types of authority. Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the natural or the secular authority. If you are a citizen of any country, If you belong to a workplace, children in the school, there is authority in there. The president, the prime minister. So my dear brothers and sisters, regardless of you do not agree with uh, Rishi Sunak, in as much as you do not agree on his policy as a citizen of the UK, you must be praying for him. Again, this is not politics, huh? At work, being an employee, regardless of what is your employer like, but the Lord said, you must have to honor them. Amen. Children in the school, regardless of Miss and Mr., that is not really appealing to you, but you must have to honor them. The Lord said, my dear brothers and sisters, Matthew 12, 17, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. Caesar is a type of nature, the natural authority, governmental authority. Amen. The second authority is familial. Sister Grace did not have get short in preaching about children. How are you to honor your parents? Amen. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Pay attention. Oh, we are all children to our parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Amen. We are all children to our parents. So even how old they are. Mom, if you are watching, I honor you. I respect you. Or message your parents later on if they are not here. Drop them a message and say, Mom, Dad, I honor you. I respect you. Amen. And the third and last authority, not the least, is what? If you are a member of a church, people online, whatever church affiliation that you belong to, or even people here, seasons change, time change. You may be in here with us today. I mean, that's the reality. There are people who were with us last year, a few years ago. And they move places and they worship. And why? Can we stop them? Release the blessing. So you may be sitting here with us today. Next year, the following year, these children. If these children go and study in Scotland, tendency in the UK, wherever place that you go and study, they tend to live in there. So wherever it is that you go to children, whether here or overseas, whether you're plucking your family out of the area and moving somewhere, find a church that is a full gospel. Amen, church. So even in the church, if you are a member of one, Hebrews 13, 17, it says in there, and I want us all to pay attention. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. 
Their work is to watch over your soul and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do it with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Amen. Aaron in her is a type of the leadership to be there to support Moses. Who are the leaders of this church? Or maybe the Lord is preparing you to that special calling of the leadership as well. Have you noticed those arms getting tired? Or you are more interested in the battle where Joshua is rather in here? Are you more interested in the battle there rather than in here where the Lord has called you? Are you more interested in your keypad that actually ringing in talking? Are you okay? You are called to be Aaron in her in the first place. You were called by Moses on top of the hill. Your business is there and not with Joshua. Otherwise, you have been sent there. Amen. You know why Moses brought Aaron? Aaron is three years older than Moses. You know why Moses brought her? Her is younger than Moses. Amen. Nowhere during that time when Moses was getting tired and Aaron said, No, Moses, move. I'm more experienced than you. Let me carry that stuff. Let me lift up that stuff. Naturally, that probably if you want to bear someone's burden, that usually what you will do. Let me try it myself. Or her. Oh, Moses, I'm more energetic. I'm more stronger. I'm more learned. I'm more studied. Let me be the one. No. So my dear brothers and sisters, there is a reason why that all of this were written. Amen. Joshua generation. Joshua generation fighting in the battlefield. Like I say, I want to have that Joshua generation spirit. Amen. Because that represents anointing. That represents accomplishment. Amen. That is who Joshua is. And as a Christian, we ought to have that Joshua spirit. Amen, church. You want to have that Joshua anointing? You have that Joshua success, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen that only became available and possible when Joshua started as a faithful follower, a faithful servant, a faithful steward. Jesus Christ himself said that you want to be the greatest among many. Be the least to begin with. Learn, train, study. Amen, church. To be honest, you know, my greatest prayer, my greatest prayer is, I pray for that person, for that man that can come and stand instead of me here. I pray. Children, it's a challenge to you. I pray for that man, for that person, for that life to come and stand. I will be there si sitting, praying for you, interceding for you.
the spirit in Joshua, you know, in spite of the people murmuring, you know, because of the people's disobedience, even Joshua had to, Joshua was obedient, but because of the murmuring of the people, even Joshua had to stay in Egypt for 40 years and suffer the consequence with them. But Joshua never abandoned the side of his teacher, of his leader. He remained a faithful servant to Moses. Joshua waited for his time and served faithfully under Moses' leadership. Amen. So this is a warning, especially to the young, to the youth. People who will be impatient with their assignment will prematurely realize that your talent, your skills, and even your calling is not enough. David was called and anointed at a very young age. But he waited for 15 years to actually sit down in the throne. But it was not lost because that 15 years of waiting, he learned, he learned, he learned. He received counsel, he received advice, he desired advice. Amen, church? So really, this is not, I mean, have, this can be applied in life, even at work. As an employee, look at employees who does not stay long in their employment. We are all employees. And if you are very critical of the work of your manager, of your colleagues, tendency is next week, next month, you will be in a different, another workplace. My dear brothers and sisters, what is it that we need to take away from here? Apart from God, we cannot do anything. Apart from God, we cannot do anything. It is only by abiding under that banner that we can be victorious in our daily battles and struggles in life, whether that be physical, spiritual, or that soul battle. Amen. Because that's what it says in Romans 15.4. Everything that had happened in the past, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through endurance taught by these written scriptures in the encouragement that they provide, that we might have hope. Amen, church. If you stand with the people of Israel during that time, there was no hope. The only hope that they hold on to was, Lord, you gave us a promise. You gave us a promise. And these are the same promises of the world, the Lord to us today. Amen, church. Grab hold on to those promises. Find out many other promises written in the Bible. Seek out the many other promises written in the Bible. The battle in Rephidim was the only time that God was introduced as the Jehovah Nisi. But that was written through the generations to the generation and it is available for you and for me and for your children and your children's after you. If rapture will not yet come. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So by claiming that the Lord is our banner, by placing that the Lord is our victory, we are saying that, Lord, you are our identity. Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I believe what you believe. Lord, I am under your authority. 
Lord, I follow your instruction. And Lord, I invoke your name. Use the name of the Lord, church. Amen. Well, not for personal gain. <laughs> we, we know in here it says that we can invoke the name of the Lord. Let's bring in our music team. The Lord is our banner. Amen, church. You know the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 5? It says in there that, Shall we stand up, church? The word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 5, it says in there that you are the salt and light of the world. Amen. Amen. You are the light of the world. Amen, church. Amen. Are you hidden under your chair? Are you hidden under the desk? Are you hidden under the bushel? The Lord said that, no, you are to be in a candle stand. Amen, church. Amen. Are you in the candle stand? But talking about the Lord as our banner, talking about the Lord, our Jehovah Nisi, what do we have to do with the banner? Do we fold it neatly and nicely and put it under the desk? No. We have to lift it up. Iwagay why? Amen. Let us ask that Holy Spirit, Jehovah our Nisi, to come and fall upon us today. In every situation, in every circumstance, in every struggle, in every pain, in every trials, in every confusion, in every doubt, in every question. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm gonna be honest with you. You want me to be honest with you? You want me to be honest with you? I want to reveal the secret. I do not know many things. What I know is nothing. So if you come and ask advice, if you come and ask questions from me, I'll try my best to advise and give you direction according to the Word of God. But you know, the Holy Spirit, He is all-knowing. The Holy Spirit knows all. Amen. You know the secret? I hope you will not be disappointed if I tell you the secret. You know the secret? I always go and consult the Holy Spirit because I do not know anything. I always consult the Holy Spirit because I do not know anything. I always ask Him question because I do not know anything. I hope that that does not bring you disappointment. I am no better than you. The same Bible that you read is the same Bible that I read. And I encourage us all. You know, in as much that I will ask the Holy Spirit to be able to minister to you this afternoon. But I personally, myself, there is that other side of me that I just want to come and ask the Holy Spirit to fall upon me as well. If only I may. I want to say, I want all of you, Holy Spirit. I desire all of you, Holy Spirit. But even if I will ask that, the Holy Spirit is substantial. There will be vast enough supply for us all. 
So with this, can I ask each and every one, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our understanding, with all our spirit and heart, with all our question, with all our doubt, with all our hesitation, with all our concerns, matters, with all Amalekites that we are facing. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to be our banner this afternoon. Come Holy Spirit and be our banner this afternoon. Come Holy Spirit fall on me now I need your anointing come in your power I love you Holy Spirit you come beating my soul and every day I grow to love you more come Holy Spirit come on church let this be our earnest desire I need your anointing coming it is more than a song Captivating my soul, and every day I grow to love you more. Teach me how to love you, Holy Spirit. For your heart, you hold my life in your hand, drawing me closer to Teach you. me how to desire Feel you. Your power in you, nothing compares. Spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you, Holy Spirit, you captivate. out discreetly but for us let us strive until we experience until the Holy Spirit grace us His presence Power in you, not 
nothing compares to this place where I can see you face to face. Come on, church. Music deep. This is more than what we have prepared for. This is more than service. This is desiring to receive the Lord. This is desiring to receive the Holy Spirit. This is more than the prayer that the pastor can give you later. This is more than the prayer that you are longing and desiring. Once the Holy Spirit comes, there is fullness. Sense of the Holy Spirit. I worship you in spirit and in of God, somebody somebody prophesy somebody worship the Lord somebody honor the Lord the place this is the experience father that I will never give up here in your presence Holy Spirit is the place that I will always look up onto here in your presence Holy Spirit experience that I will stand for better is a few moments like this than many hours spent elsewhere I have no greater joy than to experience you Holy Spirit Come on, people of God. The Holy Spirit of the living God is here. The Holy Spirit of the living God is here. He does not need to come from elsewhere. He is here. If you cannot experience it, if you cannot feel it, ask yourself, myself, my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, my spirit. What is hindering you to experience the Holy Spirit of God? Are you desiring? Are you praying? Are you crying? Are you setting up your heart open? Or is it more than just really a declaration of your mouth? But in your heart, you are not convinced. 
Is it actually the case of Holy Spirit, I believe in you, but in your mind and in your heart, you are not convinced. My dear brothers and sisters, you know personally, this is the moment, this is the experience in the presence and company of the Holy Spirit, however short it is, that I will not change my stand regarding the Holy Spirit. It is this moment like this that in spite of trials, frustrations, pain, tribulations, Amalekites, that with the help of the Lord and few chosen people, I remain to lift my hands up. and say that, Lord, I will not waver. Church, desire the Holy Spirit. Desire to experience the Holy Spirit. Desire to experience the Holy Spirit. It is your only, it is our only way of connection to the Father. It is our only way of connection to the Father. Yes, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. But you need the enablement of the Holy Spirit to teach you, to point you, to lead you, to walk with you in that way. The Holy Spirit is given for you and for me and for the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is not only given to convict us with the sin, righteousness, and judgment, but the Holy Spirit, you ever, remember, you ever wonder why the Holy Spirit dwell with us? The Holy Spirit is not something that comes to you in the day of conviction and convicts you with your sin, with righteousness in judgment. But my dear brothers and sisters, it says in here that the Holy Spirit dwells and lives with us because we need the Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day life. We need the Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day life what good is knowledge and understanding? What good is wealth? What good is health? What good is victory? What good is unity? If the Holy Spirit is not in there. You know what the enemy loves? You know what Satan wants? Is the unity that does not challenge the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, you want to be united with your brothers and your sisters? You want to be united with people around you? First, be united with the Holy Spirit. Let us first be united in the Holy Spirit. Let us first be united in the Holy Spirit. That is what Joshua generation is all about. And Joshua generation, it's not about age. It's not about generational age. Joshua generation, 
is the believer nowadays who are ought to be working and operating in manifestation, in anointing, in victory. But first, let us be united with the Holy Spirit. People, my dear brothers and sisters, in this church, there are various and different ministries. Evangelism. Say, okay, evangelism. Let's visit. Let's go here and there. We need to be united with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is heaven's greatest evangelist. Music team, you want the lead to lead the church and praise and worship. You want to bring the church to the very presence of God as opposed to just leading songs and music. You need to be united with the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that will open that floodgates for His people to be able to enter into His presence. Teachers, you, Hector, and teachers, others who stand and exhort with the word of the Lord. We need to be united with the Holy Spirit because it is only through the Holy Spirit that His word becomes senseless, sens becomes sense. Because if you're not gonna put the Holy Spirit on the middle of it, You will understand a different message. You will consume a different message. Prayers. Yes, let's pray in there before the service begins. Let's pray in our houses before we come to the church. But we must first be united with the Holy Spirit. Because it is that Holy Spirit that brings connection to the Father. And whatever it is, ushers, and whatever other parts, ministries, department that you are part of, women's, men's, let us be united with the Holy Spirit. Let us enjoy the Holy Spirit while He is here. The Word of the Lord says that we are walking in the end times. The son of perdition is already at work, is already operating. And He is just waiting to be revealed but that will happen only if the one who restricts him will be taken away my dear brothers and sisters just want to share a little bit with you the church became alive when the Holy Spirit came during the time of Pentecost Amen and I do believe that when the believers will be raptured, I believe that not only the believers will be raptured, I believe that the Holy Spirit as well will be raptured. Because according to the Word, it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us, it is the Holy Spirit that enables us to believe in the Lord. You know, during the tribulation, it will be difficult to believe in God. It will be difficult to believe in God. 
So enjoy the Holy Spirit while He is here to be enjoyed. Come to the Lord through the Holy Spirit while there is enablement in way. You know, before the Holy Spirit was given to the believers, how our people led to the Lord. The Lord raised Himself as prophets, Moses, judges, and kings that led people to the Lord. But now the Holy Spirit is here. It is the Holy Spirit's ministry to bring us to the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit ministry to make us understand what and who the Lord is. That is the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that during the tribulation, it will be difficult to believe the Lord has to physically bring back people in heaven to come and preach. So right here, right now, if you are someone who come and stand not only in this church, in even other churches. If you are someone who come in the church every Sunday and stand and you say that you come to worship the Lord and yet you distant yourself from the Holy Spirit. Let us better consider our mind because it is only through the Holy Spirit that enables us to really appreciate and understand and experience God. If there are people here that says, I don't understand. How can they worship like that? I don't understand. How can they cry like that? I don't understand. How can they be openly worship the Lord like that? It's only one answer to that question. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And fall on me now. Amen, church. Pwede po ba? Is it possible? Would it be possible? That instead, or we can all still sing a victory song, but instead of singing a victory song to celebrate something, to celebrate the success of victory. Can it be possible? Can we sing this song instead and desire the Holy Spirit? Would it be okay if you allow me a second chance to ask the Holy Spirit and experience Him at least for myself personally once more? Amen? Is that okay? You are welcome to join.
God, if someone wants to pray, if someone wants to prophesy, if someone wants to praise the Lord, that is what an assembly is all about. That is what a fellowship is all about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. of God. My little ones, my little ones, I see your hearts, I see your pain, I see your fears, and I wish to tell you that my Holy Spirit, although he's powerful, he is gentle. He falls like rain. 
He falls like gentle rain upon your hearts. Your souls are like a watered garden. Let my Holy Spirit gently fall upon you. Do not be fearful. Take the umbrellas down. Do not hide. Do not hide for shelter from me. I am only good. My ways are only perfect. And my love for you is only deep, pure, holy. I long to have that fellowship with each one of you. Allow me. Allow me. I am a gentleman. Invite me. And I will come. And I will bathe you in the areas where you need my touch. Where you need to see my smile upon you. When you need to feel my arms and my love around you. When you need to see light where there is darkness. Where you need to see comfort where there is pain. Where you need to feel someone is with you. Where you are lonely and distressed. For I am a good God and I only give good gifts to my children. So let me give them to you and receive them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Let's fall in love with the Holy Spirit. I know the Lord is putting a words in your heart. Have no fear. Recognize the Lord. Recognize the Lord. I know that the Lord is imputing a words in your heart. Even sa Tagalog, wag kang matakot. May pinapasabi ang Panginoon sa iyo. And you believe na galing sa Panginoon. Exhort His body. Exhort His people. from this worth. Um, I immediately thought of the 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7 and 8. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only. He who now restrains will, be, will, will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. And just when I was, I was thinking about all this, that if this is going to happen, this could be a, a frightful time that is coming upon this earth. Because with the Holy Spirit retraining, straining, taken out of the way, to have to say what could happen. But I just wonder if time is pretty short at the moment, especially if there's a pre-tribulation rapture. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that each one of us may really dedicate oneself totally to the Lord Jesus. 
Father, we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit may come upon us at this time, Lord, in great measure, so that we can be of some use to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I really do pray, Lord, that if he is to be taken out of the way when the rapture takes place with the saints being removed from this earth, literally, I suppose I could say, all hell will be let loose. Oh, Father God, we ask you, Lord, that there may be a mighty revival before this happens, Lord, that millions, even billions, will come to the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal saviour. We just ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? May pinapasabi ang Panginoon? All authority in heaven and on earth This belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the authority is belongs to Him. If you're struggling, the bondage of sin, there is freedom in His name. If we're struggling of lying, there is freedom in His name. Amen. If we're struggling, If we are doubting about His power, the declaration of faith, we pray, we declare that our faith will grow and grow as we walk in our daily lives. That all authority on heaven and earth is belongs to Him. So we declare, O Lord, Father God, that we trust You We believe in you. We believe you, Lord, that any that worrying us, Lord, you're there as our comforter, O God. You set us free, O God, by the blood of Jesus. In his name, amen. Amen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it. Because I will completely blot out the memory of the Amalek from under the heaven. Moses built an altar and called it Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that in spite of facing all these types of Amalek. Thank you, Lord, that in spite facing all this type of Amalekites, thank you for putting your banner over me. Thank you for putting your banner over my family. Thank you for putting your banner over my loved ones. Thank you for putting your banner over my workplace. Thank you for putting your banner over my community. 
Thank you for putting your banner over my health. Thank you for putting your banner in every situation and circumstances that I am in. Thank you for putting your banner over this church. Thank you for putting your banner all over me. Yahweh Nisi, I pray that whenever I swerve to the left or that whenever I swerve to the right, remind me always these words that were written by Moses as a reminder to all the generations as a permanent reminder to all the generations a record of instructions that you have asked Moses that you are our banner you are our victory you are our promise you are our Yahweh Nisi that means that my battle is your battle and your victory is my victory my dear brothers and sisters be encouraged be encouraged grab hold of the promises of the Lord Amen and I want to be able to declare one of the promise of the Lord to each and every one of us this afternoon that may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit not only be with you not only to walk with you not only to travel with you but to speak with you to enlighten you to guide you to lead you to teach you of all His ways through Christ Jesus Christ our Lord and all the people of God says Amen 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 May God bless you all, church. Hallelujah. Um, before uh, we we'll leave it to the music team, if they want to sing a victory song. But before that, can I call Sister Joanna and Brother Michael? Sing church. Come on, children. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God, may the Lord God, may the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God bless you. Na release blessing. Uh, we thank the Lord for. Uh, Another year, uh, giving us a chance to celebrate our anniversary. Uh, 17 years. 17? 17 years, oh, wow. yeah. I thought uh, it was shorter than that. Yeah. And <laughs> we're still hoping that uh, God will answer our prayers. No. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing possible with God. No. And also we thank uh, our uh, CR family for always being there for us, uh, praying us and interceding us, you know. So, yeah, thank you and uh, 
all the glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. No, there is no impossible to the Lord. Let's bring that hope into a place of trust. Amen. Let's bring that hope in the place of trust. Walang imp There's no impossible thing to the Lord. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hey, come here uh, so that the church may pray for you. Come here. Face the church. Okay, let us extend our hands to our dearly beloved brethren. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah, Lord. Our Yahweh Nisi. Thank you, Father God. Because, yes, in spite of the Amalek, Father God, that all of us face, that this couple face, O Lord. But Lord, we thank you because you have reminded us today that you are our banner. You are our victory. You are our promise, O God. So, yes, Father, we thank you for these 17 years of union and partnership, Father God. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you have walked with them. And thank you because by faith, we know and we do believe that you will continue to do so, Father. We thank you so much, Father God, of the past trials and struggles that they have overcome. And Father God, we know and we do believe that even as they continue to move forward in you, that there will be many more trials and struggles and Amalek being presented. But Father, the banner who were with them in the past will continuously to be the banner that will walk and stand by them this current time and will be the same banner that they will walk with to overcome future, Father God. And say yes, Father God. We thank you so much for their life. Our prayer, Father God, is in between them that they will continue to grow in you that you are going to continue to nurture their relationship, their union in you, Father God. At Lord, we thank you, especially during those times of trials, struggles, during those times of frustrations, doubt and unbelief, Father God, during those times of pain and question in the back of their mind that brought them here today. At Lord, we pray, that at the end of all days, may they always find comfort under your banner, Father God. Just like those people of Israelites before, it was a miracle that made them victorious. It was you that made them victorious. And Father God, Lord, yes, you know the earnest desire and prayer of my dear brothers and sisters. And Father, we stand alongside them. We intercede with them, Father God. Lord, we all bring this hope in you into a place of trust, O oh God. You've said that in you there is nothing impossible. You said that in you there is nothing impossible, Father God. Lord, we surrender them unto you. We surrender everything in their hearts, all their regrets, all their desire, all their prayer. We bring them unto you, Father God. And all of us, corporately as a church, we come, Father God, and ask for that grace and mercy that you can extend to this couple, Father God. And we will continue to do so. We will continue to do so, Father God. So thank you so much for them and for the life of each and everyone. Continue to give us strength, perseverance according to your words to continue to bring to you their earnest most cry and prayer through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Thank you, thank you. Amen. So it's up to the music team. If they want to lead us to a victory uh, song, then 
Hallelujah. Salamat. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, let's, can we pray for the Philippine-bound uh, family? Jack, come and we'll pray for you. And come, come, Sister Mers and Brother Manny. Maybe baka sabay-sabay kayo sa aeroplano bukas. Anong airline kayo? What is your airline? Etihad. Etihad. How about you guys? What's your airline? Etihad as well? Air China. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of holiday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the gift of holiday. Thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to uh, holiday. Uh, I think for Brother Manny and Sister Merce, it's their 12th holiday in the last two years. 12th ba or? <laughs> ah, fourth. Uh, fourth uh, I thought it's the 12th, it's the fourth holiday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray for them. Hallelujah, most gracious Lord and heavenly Father, our God, the banner, O Lord. Lord, we entrust unto you, your children, your people, our dear brothers and sisters, Brother Andy, Sister Janelle, Baby Jack Jack, Father, Brother Manny, Sister Merz, who will all be flying to the Philippines tomorrow, Father God. Although they have a different airline, but they will be uh, departing from uh, the same community, they will be driving and traveling to the same airport they will be taking off from the same airport father and they're gonna go home to the same country our beloved nation of the Philippines father God Lord we pray for your protection father the moment that they will leave all their shot as they drive to the airport Protect their journey, Father, as they fly to the Philippines. Lord, protect their journey. And even as they arrive in the Philippines, Lord, and however long or short that they will spend in their with their loved ones in the Philippines, we entrust it unto you, Father God. We pray for your continued protection. We pray for your continued covering, Lord. Preserve their health. Preserve their well-being, Father. Give them the ability Give them the strength to be able to do everything that their heart seek to do back in the Philippines, Father God. Lord, give them the spirit of enjoyment that they may enjoy, O oh God, according to the prescription in manner of enjoyment written in your words, Father God. And Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that all the drivers, the pilot, the flight steward, Father God, Lord, we pray that you extend to them the corresponding favor that comes from you, Father God. Lord, even their loved ones in the Philippines, that they will be welcomed with joy, O oh God. They will be welcomed with gladness, Father Father God, let there be peace, let there be unity, there be, let there be uh, enjoyment and happiness amongst them, Father God. Lord, we don't know what the weather is like in the Philippines, but Father, uh, grant them a favorable weather to be able to enjoy their holiday, Father God, especially for Jack Jack and for Andy, Father God. We pray, O oh Lord, especially on that different, difference in the weather, difference in climate, difference in diet, Father God. Lord, we pray by faith that you're gonna cover them and protect them. Rebuke whatever contaminants, rebuke whatever infection, rebuke whatever illness in Jesus' name, Father, so that they will enjoy it, Father God. Lord, it may be raining in there, monsoon, typhoon season, but Lord, we pray that you continue to grant them safety and security, Father God. And thank you so much, Lord. We joyfully await for the time that they will come back because we know and we do believe that during their stay there that you're gonna equip them with wonderful testimony. Lord, we are looking forward to hear how you have worked, Father, how you have manifested during their stay in there. And thank you so much, Lord. Our prayer is not only that they will go home to for a holiday to rest, Father God, but Lord, let them be your instrument 
to share your words. Let them be your instrument, Father God, to share your gospel to their loved ones, to their friends, to their community in the Philippines, to the people out there, O God, who are yet to hear from you, O God. Thank you, Lord. And once again, we acknowledge that you are Jehovah Nisi upon their journey. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you.